Hi, and welcome to this Pro MB Downwards Expansion Tutorial. I'll start by processing drums again, this time in 808 style loop, using a single full range band. And I'll switch the process mode to expand instead of compress. With the range knob set to negative values, we're now applying downwards expansion, so signals below the threshold are turned down even lower and we're increasing the dynamic range of the material. With a harder knee, I can be more precise and surgical with my threshold. And I can use the release time to control the tails of the drum hits and the roominess of the sound. With a reasonably fast release time, I can significantly reduce the sustain of the drums and the reverb. If I turn down the ratio, I can create very gentle and transparent expansion settings, which can often help to reduce background noise or spill between microphones without ever being audible. Turning the ratio up, on the other hand, can create much more extreme expansion. With very high ratios, we get something more usually known as a noise gate. And with careful tuning of the threshold, I can remove everything between the kick and snare hits and shape those hits with the attack and release parameters. The very low fundamental frequency of the kick drum is a bit of a problem, however, as the long sustain tends to keep the gate open and very fast release times can start to introduce distortion as the gate starts to respond to individual cycles of the wave. I'm therefore going to use the common noise gate technique of filtering the sidechain to control which parts of the sound the gate is listening to. I'll slide open the expert tab and notice the band and free buttons at the top. In the default band mode, the sidechain listens to the same part of the signal that you're processing. As we're currently processing the whole signal with this one band, pressing audition to listen to the sidechain just gives us the original signal again but down mixed to mono because the channels are stereo linked. If I drag the crossover frequencies for the band, however, so we're only processing part of the signal, we can hear the side chain is filtered to match. Now I'll switch to free mode instead, and we see handles appear on the display to indicate we can now tune the crossover filters manually, independently of the band crossover frequencies. I'll drag the high cut filter all the way to the right, then set the low cut filter just above the low fundamental of the kick, so the gate is listening to everything except those sub bass frequencies. And let's turn off audition again to listen to the processed signal. The gate now responds much more cleanly to the kick, allowing me to completely isolate the kick and snare hits and dramatically alter their dynamic shape using the attack and release control. If I drag the low cut filter handle up to about 2 or 3 kHz, I can isolate just the snare plus clap hits on the backbeat. And likewise, I can drag the filters down lower to isolate the kick, while still avoiding those problematic frequencies at around 50 Hz. It's worth bearing in mind, however, that low frequencies are inherently slower than high frequencies, so this type of setting might require quite a lot of look ahead to avoid affecting the shape of the transient at the start of each hit. So far, all of this would of course be possible with a good quality gate plugin such as Pro-G. A dedicated noise gate would usually offer a much greater gain reduction range than Pro-MB. But in normal use, I rarely need more than 20 dB of gain reduction from a noise gate. So the 30 dB of range available in Pro MB is usually plenty. But of course, Pro MB also allows us to restrict our processing to just a specific range of frequencies. For example, if I process only the high frequencies, with the sidechain set to band mode, so it's listening to those same high frequencies, I can completely remove the hi-hats. This 
trick can also be very useful with acoustic drum kits to fix excessive hi-hat spill on a snare mic. In this case, I only want to control the low boom of the kick drum and stop it getting in the way of the bass guitar part. So I'll drag the upper crossover frequency down to about 150 Hz. And I'll switch the sidechain back to free mode so I can exclude the low kick fundamental again. I can now adjust the release time and the range to reduce the sustain of the kick drum enough to leave some room for the bass. I'm also going to massage the bass part slightly to fit better with the kick drum. We can clearly see the low fundamental of the root note down at around 50 Hz, very close to the fundamental frequency of the kick. I could simply filter or EQ the low fundamental out of the bass part, of course. And actually, with the higher harmonics still present, this isn't as damaging to the bass sound as you might expect. However, I do miss the weight of the fundamental if I remove it. So I'll add a low band in Pro MB and try expanding those low frequencies instead, with a medium ratio of around 3 to 1 sub-bass frequencies now decay more quickly, leaving more space for the kick drum, while still preserving the depth and weight of those low root notes. As with the drums example, I can further tune the dynamic behaviour by opening the expert panel, switching to free mode and tuning the sidechain filters manually. With the sidechain listening only to the low mid frequencies, I can achieve a very consistent bounce for each note. And I might also choose to slide the crossover frequency a little higher and add some extra dynamics to the second harmonic as well. If I bypass both instances for bass and drums, we can hear how dramatically this has cleaned up the low end. Downwards expansion can often also be useful for low mid-range frequencies to reduce the congestion that can often occur in busy mixes. In this case, I'm processing a stereo stem of a horn section consisting of trumpets, trombones and sax. And I'm going to dial in some expansion for the low and low mid frequencies to help leave more room for the other elements of the mix. And also to add some extra dynamic punch to the low end of the trombones. Low mid-range congestion often also clusters in the middle of the mix, so you might find it useful to open the Expert tab and slide the stereo linking slider over to the right. We're now only expanding the middle of the stereo image and leaving the sides alone. When I check this in mono, I find the horns now sound a little too thin for my tastes. So I'm going to dial in a touch of makeup gain to compensate. However, when I switch back to stereo again, this now seems a little too much. I'm going to fix this by turning the band pan ring over to the left a little, to dial the side channel gain back slightly. And also by sliding the linking parameter back over towards the middle. So I'm now applying a small amount of expansion to the sides as well as to the middle. This type of setting can also be useful when mastering, sometimes helping to reduce low mid clutter in a mix without losing the punch. Again, you may find it useful to open the Expert tab and apply the expansion only to the middle of the mix where such congestion often occurs. Another interesting option you may want to consider, however, is to slide the linking fader over to the left instead to apply separate, independent expanders to the left and right channels. Where unlinked compressors will often tend to narrow the stereo image, unlinked expanders will have the opposite effect. Any volume differences between the channels will be increased, and if parts wander in the stereo field, they will tend to move out towards the sides of the mix, rather than in towards the middle. 
That's all I've got time for in this video. Next time I'll be looking at upward expansion techniques and some of the ways in which they might be useful. Thanks for watching.